uh, just a very quick review of what we covered last time for rate of consolidation calculation. Uh, last time I listed the three types of uh, problems, basically. The first one is given U, which is the average degree consolidation, uh, you are asked to find the time it takes to reach that. So example is how long it takes to reach 50% of consolidation. And the path to solve this problem is from U using Tersaki's solution, which is this table 11.7, find the corresponding time factor T sub V and from which you can back calculate small t, that's time. So that's the first type. We went over one example last time. And the second type is given small time t, we want to find the degree consolidation or the settlement. The path for uh, this type of problem is you start from small t, calculate time factor, t sub v, then from Tosagi's solution, again, table 11.7, you got the average degree consolidation u corresponding to that time factor. And then if you want to find out the settlement, you can use the definition of u, which is SCT over SC final to find settlement. So that's a second type of problem. Again, we went over one last time. And the third type of problem uh, is where we're actually going to focus in today's lecture. So I have two, two examples for uh, this type of problem. One is to determine K, that's coefficient of permeability or hydraulic conductivity. So that comes from this C sub V relationship here. Okay. Coefficient of consolidation C sub V relates to permeability. So we can use that to find the permeability. And the second here, this is to determine C sub V. Okay. And this equation comes from the time factor definition. That's how we can find C sub V. And that's what actually you use in your lab consolidation test to calculate C sub V. And actually the other type of problem we're going to see that falls uh, within this category, this type of problem is you can actually use this C sub V. Okay. You can use this expression also to find C sub V. Okay. So that, that's actually included here. And the first example we're going to go over today actually uh, belongs to this. Okay. So we're going to use uh, this equation to figure out coefficient of consolidation. Uh, so the first example I'm going to go over today, this is example nine, um, this again chapter 11. And for this example, we are given an NC clay. We have the initial stress, final stress after loading, and then the corresponding void ratio at initial and at final stage. And then the hydraulic conductivity, that small k, is also known. And we're going to calculate how long will it take for four meter thick clay layer in the field, double-way drained, or excuse me, one-way drained to reach 60% consolidation. Okay. And for this time rate of consolidation calculation, we know we need HDR. Okay. And also, coefficient of consolidation C sub V. In HDR for this problem is given to you. It's a four meter thick clay layer, one way drainage. So we know HDR in this example is four meter. Okay. So this is one way drainage, drain down one side. The key to solve this problem is actually to find the coefficient of consolidation C sub V. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So for this example, and for this example, again, as I mentioned, we need HDR, which is four meter. So that's given, and also C sub V. Okay. To find the C sub V, uh, we're going to use that relationship between C sub V and permeability. So that's what I showed at the beginning. So K over MV gamma water. So we're going to use this expression here. Permeability or hydraulic conductivity K is given to you in the problem statement. So really the key is to find this MV. Okay. Unit weight of water is a constant. Okay. So this MV, remember, is called the coefficient of volume compressibility.
So this coefficient of volume compressibility, by definition, this is defined as a sub v. That's coefficient of compressibility over one plus e. Okay. And this a sub v coefficient of compressibility is defined as delta e over delta sigma prime okay, over one plus e. Okay. And delta e and delta sigma prime for this example, uh, you have that consolidation data. Okay, so we have that. So if I go back to the problem statement, so you know the initial and the final stress. You also know the initial and final void ratio. So you can calculate this change in stress and change in void ratio. So you can calculate. This delta E is 1.22 minus 0.98. If I go back. So that's 1.22 in 0.98. Okay. So that's E naught minus EF. Okay. And this gives you 0.24. And the corresponding change in effective stress, delta sigma prime, this is, we have sigma naught prime. Okay. So let me go back here. Oh, sigma f prime minus sigma naught prime. So we're using f minus uh, initial here just to make sure we got a positive a sub v number. Okay. The slope itself is a negative. Okay. So this is 400 minus 200 is 200 kilonewton per meter square. So we have these two numbers, and the only thing left in this m sub v equation is this e here. Okay. So for this void ratio, you can either use the initial or uh, you can use the average. So I'm going to use average here. Okay. So this is one over two e naught plus e f. This is one over two, uh, 1.22 plus 0.98, that's 1.1. 1 .1. Okay. So with all these numbers, you can calculate this MV, coefficient of volume compressibility. So this is uh, 0.24, that's delta E over 200, that's delta sigma prime over one plus 1.1. 1 .1. Okay. So this MV is 5.7 times 10 to negative four. Unit is meter square per kilonewton. And then the C sub V is K over MV gamma water, okay, unit weight of water. Then K, this is given to you. So permeability 0 0.61, 10 to negative four meter per day. Okay, so you have that. So this is 0.61 times 10 to negative four meter per day okay. over MV 5.7 times 10 to negative four meter square per kilonewton times the unit weight water. Here, everything is in SI unit. So kilonewton meter, meter square. So we're going to use the uh, uh, value 9.81, 9.81. 
So that's the unit weight of water in SI unit. So that's actually kilonewton per meter cube. So this is meter square per kilonewton. So this will give you C sub V in term of meter square per day. So this gives us 0 0.0109 meter square per day. So again, when you're plugging numbers, make sure you're using consistent unit. Okay. So we have meter for length so throughout. So we're going to get meter square per day for C sub V. And once you have C sub V, then the problem asks for uh, T for U of 60%. Okay. For 60% degree consolidation, so from table 11.7. Okay. So from this table. So let's look at for U of 60% first. So U is 60%, then the corresponding T sub V, 0 0.286. Okay. And once you have this T sub V, then that time T, small t, for 60% degree consolidation, this is T sub V times HDR square over C sub V. Okay. And then if you plug in all those numbers, that's 0.286. And one way drainage, HDR is the thickness of the consolidating layer, that's four, divided by 0.0109. And if you work out the math here, this is about 420 days. So we'll take that clay layer 420 days to reach 60% degree consolidation. 